Hello everyone, welcome to this video series on sample questions related to BASIS certification. This video is based on the chapter which is called basic concepts present in the BASIS certification preparation guide. So we will now see the first question. So we have this question which says how many observations and variables does the data set below contain so the first thing that we need to know this uh, answer this question is that you know in SAS the data is organized in terms of uh, rows and columns so each column is called a variable so here in this case we have three columns name sex and age and we have five rows in, in as such but the first row is considered as header row which is used to capture the names of the individual columns so we effectively have four observations one two three and four this is these are like each row is considered as an observation and each column is considered a variable so we have three variables and four observations let us take a look at the options given and then see which option is correct so we have first option says three observations and four variables second option says three observations and three variables and the fourth option says four observations and three variables so we have seen that we have four observations and three variables so let us select this and see if it's, this is the correct answer yeah this seems to be the correct answer it says our response is correct so let us now move on to the next question so this says how many program steps are executed when the below program is processed. So in SAS we have two kinds of steps. One is data step and the second one is proc steps. So the data step begins with the keyword data and it ends with either a run statement or a following proc or data statement. So here in this case the first step is starting with data and then we have a run statement and this ends the step so we have one step here and then the second one is the keyword proc so here the sort procedure is being called and this sort uh, this second step is a proc step and it is ending with a run statement here so there is a second step and then we have this third step which is beginning with the word proc so and it is ending with run so on the third uh, step is a proc step and it is for print procedure so we have three steps so let us take a look at the options given and then see which of them is correct so as per the flow we have identified it as three steps the first option says three second four five six so let's go and choose the third, first option three and then see if it is correct or not so i am clearing up my annotations so it says our response was correct let us take a look at the next question and then this says what type of variable is the variable ACCT NUM in the data set below? So we have been given a screenshot which contains two variables uh, ACCT num which is maybe it is the short name for account number and the balance. So in the first column if we see uh, the question is related to what type of variable is account number. In SAS variables or each column can store only two types of information the first one is character a, cal a column is specifically used to store either character data or numeric data so what what exactly does come under numeric data if it contains only digits or decimal place or plus or minus sign and we have something called a scientific notation of numbers which is represented like 1e9 or 1e-9 so what does this 1e9 and 1e-9 represent is it represents 1 multiplied by 10 to the power of 9 so what does this 1e-9 represent it represents 1 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 9 so for example if we have 2e 6 it means 2 multiplied by 10 to the power of 6 so if we have any uh, information which is purely a number or a scientific notation if we only have decimals or plus or minus signs that information or that column can be considered for numeric data and uh, anything else if we have information related to any other 
uh, data apart from these numbers it has to be stored as part of a character variable so here if we take a look at the account number so we have rows like with the values of 3 4 5 6 underscore 1 so underscore is not part of a regular numeric data so it must be a character variable for that reason and then here also on the second row we have underscore and on the third row we have the text of the which contains alphabets romano and choi so if a variable is of numeric type it should contain only these values like digits decimal place plus or minus or the numbers in scientific notation so if as this column has some explicit or additional text uh, which do not fall under the definition of the numeric data this must be a character variable so let us clear the annotations and submit the answer of character and then see if it is correct or not so this is our response is correct let's move to the next question so again this, this question is based on it uh, seems to be based on the type of the variable so what type of variable is the variable where in the data set below again we have been given the screenshot of a data set containing three observations and two variables and the first variable is brand and the second one is where so the question is related to the variable type for this where variable so where it contains 43 34 so we have seen that if a column is required to store only digits decimal places plus or minus signs and uh, any additional scientific notation numbers so that will be considered a numeric variable so here in this case on the last observation we have a period or dot being represented so by default in sas if for a numeric column if we do not have a value it is shown as a missing or period value with dot so this must be a character variable or numeric variable so let us see if this is correct or not it says our response is correct so now let us move on to the next question so this question is which of the following variable names is valid so now let us just first try to uh, see some of the rules for variable names so in SAS the variable names can be up to 32 characters so and it can only begin with a underscore or alphabet it can be either small or uh, uppercase alphabet so and subsequent characters can only be alphabets or digits or underscore and no other special characters so 32 characters begin with underscore or alphabet and subsequent characters have to be either alphabets digits or underscore so let us see each of the options and then see why which of them is a valid name or which of them is not valid so here if we see the first option the value is 4 bar th state so we have seen that the variable name can only begin with underscore or an alphabet so here this is beginning with a digit so this is not the correct answer so and then then the next option we have dollar symbol and then cost so we this fails for two reasons so again the variable name cannot contain any uh, characters which are not alphabets digits or underscore it contains a special character which is dollar sign so this fails for that reason and then in the third option it says underscore items underscore so it is beginning with an underscore which is allowed and the subsequent characters have to be either alphabets digits or uh, underscore so this seems to be okay and then the last option if we see tax hyphen rate so we have seen that it can contain only alphabets digits or underscore so there is a hyphen here so this is not correct so let us choose our third option and then see if it is correct or not so it says our response is correct let me clear the annotations so it says our response is correct so let us now move on to the next question so which of the files is a permanent sas files so so there is a concept of permanent versus temporary files in sas so for permanent so what do we mean is like it is stored somewhere in a directory of our hard drive 
so for that we assign a short name for that directory and refer the short name which we call it as libref followed by the name of the data set name of data set so and for temporary so we have a short name called work assigned so this is also a location on our hard drive but what happens is whenever we close this as session that folder gets deleted on the and all the data set stored in that uh, folder or library will be deleted so here if we have to the question is which of the following is a permanent sas file if we are referring a permanent sas file it has to have a libref other than work and then followed by the name of the data set so here if we see the first option it says sas help dot prd cell so the here we are using a two level naming convention which is libref dot name of the data set so here the library is sas help and the name of the data set is prd cell so it is a two level name and the first level is libref and it is not work so this is correct op option so let us now take a look at the next option it says sas user dot my sales and again the it is using two le two level naming convention and the first level naming convention of the libref is sas user which is not work so it must be a permanent library and the name of the data set is my dot sales my sales so this is also referring a permanent sas file and the next one is profits dot quarter one so again this is a non work library and so this must be a permanent sas file so and on the last option we have been given this all of these options so all of them were correct so let us choose all of these clear the notations and then submit so it says our response was correct so let us move on to the next question so in a data step how can you reference a temporary sas data set named forecast so we have been seeing in the previous question that we have two kinds of things one is permanent and temporary so any library which is other than work would be considered permanent and which is other than work would be considered permanent for temporary we call it as the data set is stored in work library so for naming the temporary data sets we have two conventions one is one level convention and two level convention so in one level convention we just provide the name of the data set in two level convention we provide the library reference followed by the name of the data set so in two level convention for referring the data sets which are present in temporary folder we can just replace the libref with work so any convention which is using one level convention or two level convention with work dot refers a temporary file so now let us see the options so the first one says forecast this is a one level naming convention so when we say one level convention so it automatically assumes that the library is work so this is correct and the next one is work dot forecast so we have seen that in the two level convention if we are referring it as work dot data set it is referring the temporary file which is present in work library so this is also correct and then the third option says sales dot forecast any library other any library reference other than work is considered a permanent as well so this is not the correct answer so we have the last option which says both a and b so this seems to be the correct answer so let us clear the annotations and then submit and then see it says our response is correct so let us move on to the next question so what is the default length for numeric variable balance so in sas we know that there can be two types of variables so one is character and the second one is numeric so the default length for numeric variable is 8 so for character variable also there again it, it default is 8 and again if you are manually assigning a text to uh, a character variable it will consider say for example if you are assigning the text abc to a variable named a so it will assign the length as 3 unless you have predefined the length of that variable uh, using a length statement so 
here the question is related to numeric variable by default if you are not specifying the length for a numeric variable it will take it as 8 say for example if you are assigning the value of 1 to a numeric a variable named a so though we have a single digit here the length it takes for the variable a is 8 so even uh, it's not like your character variable if, if you are assigning the text of ABC which contains three characters to the variable A. So it takes the length of three if you have not assigned a length prior to assigning this statement. But for numeric variables, it will use the value of eight. So here say they said like it is a numeric variable and it is balanced. So the default length is eight. So let us clear the annotations and then submit our answer. So it says our response was correct. Let us move on to the next question. So how many statements does the following SAS program contain? So we know that in SAS each statement ends with a semicolon. In order to answer this question we need to count the number of semicolons which are not part of the text. So there can be some semicolons within the uh, text that we assign to something so here this is there is one semicolon here and there is a second semicolon here and there is a third semicolon here and there is a fourth semicolon and there is this fifth semicolon so how many statement does this following program contain so it is equivalent to the number of semicolons we had as part of uh, the open statements so what I was why I was stressing on the word of like ending on the statement so sometimes say for example if we had a semicolon in the label so state is equal to name of semicolon and state this not this does not qualify as a semicolon so it would have become part of the text uh, that is being assigned as label for the state variable so we should not count those semicolons as uh, the ending of a statement or this thing so we had five so let us check and one other thing to note in this is like if we see so we have two statements on the same line so SAS allows us to write multiple statements on the same line or we have also an example wherein one statement is split into two different lines here so one statement is present on two different lines here on the second case so we have two different statements present on the same uh, line so we, this also serves as an example of like how SAS code can be formatted so now we have we have identified that there were five statements so let's choose the option five and then select submit so it says our response is correct and then let's move on to the next question it says what is a SAS data library so this is kind of a formal definition so it is a collection of SAS files such as data sets and catalogs yes so in some operating systems environments a physical collection of SAS files on a particular hard drive so this is also correct in some operating environments a logically related collection of SAS files is considered a library this is kind of like when you go through the documentation you will see the definition for uh, the SAS library so you will have to remember this so again so let us choose the option all of this and then submit so it says our response is correct so we have seen all the questions which are part of basic concepts uh, chapter of basic certification prep guide in this video thank you for watching and keep learning